Vanamadavi is there, she seems to be similar to mankind in wisdom. Humans let the Supreme Lord slip away from their hearts. Then they search for that Paranjothai by lighting Lakshdipam in the Praharas of dark temples and Garbhagriha. Vanamadavi also does such a brilliant thing daily. She lets the ardent Sun Lord slip from her grasp into the ocean. Then she gets worried that her Nathan is missing. She lit Lakshadweep and searched for the Sun. Does she light only Laksa Deepam? Godanyo Kodi Danga lights the lamps and she also sleeps all night looking for the sun. When Vandiyathevan regained consciousness and opened his eyes, he saw thousands of flames flashing before his eyes, he wondered in which temple they have lit the Laksh Deepam so beautifully. Later, he realized that they were not lamps but burning stars in the sky. He realized that he was lying on his back in the boat and a rope was tied around his waist on a wet cloth. The cold breeze blew over his body and gave him infinite comfort and peace. The sound of Angara's voice in the calm ocean created a rare peace in his soul. A hymn was also heard in the middle of the song. What song is that? Where and when has he heard that before? Aha! That strange girl! Flowerpot! He sat up a bit and looked in front of him. Yes, she is. The boat is pushing. Singing that sad song, the boat hurts. Vandiyathevan remembered everything that had happened the night before like a flash of lightning in a car, showing many objects in a moment. That is, until when he waded into the sea, Fungajalai also jumped into the sea and came towards him. He doesn't remember anything that happened after that. The woman must have saved him and put him in the boat. She has tied a rope around her waist to the crossbeam of the boat so that she does not fall back into the sea when the boat moves. She wraps the rope around her half-dress so that it does not hurt the skin of the body. Vandiyathevan touched the half-coil around the loincloth and looked at it. He found the money and straw safe. Ah! What a mistake to doubt this woman! If she had a different kind of evil intention, would she not have saved herself? How much she must have struggled to lift herself out of the sea in a boat with her arms limp and unconscious. How did he do it alone? She is a rare girl. Here she is awake, why? Is he coming closer to himself after seeing what he has woken up? What is she going to do? No. No. She is doing something else. Aha. Uh -huh. She is going to tie the mat to the sail. What a tough job and to do it independently. Footy! Footy! Oko! Are you awake? Untie me! I'll help you too. It will be a great help if you are idle enough. If you want to untie the rope, you can untie it yourself. But don't jump into the sea again. Vandiyathevan untied the rope that bound him and let him go. Fungusalibai lifted the tree and stopped it. She spread the mat and let it fly. The boat now went on a merry-go-round, it went quickly. Sea maiden. Why? Thirsty. You've been drinking salt water, haven't you? What can you do without being thirsty? Samathira Kumara came near Vandiyathevan with a gourd. I even brought you food. It also fell when you jumped into the sea. Luckily this turtle survived. Saying this, Surei took the cloth that was covering Kujakai and gave it away. Vandiyathevan bought it and drank the water. Clearing his throat, he said, I got the wrong idea about you, I'm sorry for that. It's no big deal. Who are you? Who am I? We're going to part when it's dawn. What time is it now? Look at the sky and know. Look at the soundscape. Said Punghuali. Vandiyadeva looked at the horizon towards the north. As he boarded the boat, the Sabta Rishis had now shifted their positions and came in half a circle. How that Arundhati Nakshatra keeps driving with Vasishta! Surprised! Only the pole star did not budge. At that point where the sky and the corner sea meet, the pole star has stood still for ages. So many ships are showing the way to the sailors. Pole star! Did you give it as an example to anyone? Who told? Who did you say? Remembering, the child astrologer said. 
Prince Arulmas Hivarma gave the North Pole as an example. Are we really going to get to see the prince? Is it going to be possible with the help of this woman? Punghuali went to her place and sat. She said, Do you know what time it is? It is halfway through the third Jamat. The wind has returned. Let's go to Naga TV at dawn. Dragon Island. Vandiyathevan asked startled. Yes, there are many islands on the northern side of Sri Lanka. One of them is Naga Island. If you land on it, you can reach Sri Lanka by land without the need to cross the sea again. What will you do after you drop me off? What do you care about me? said Punghuali. You did me such a great favor, didn't you? Shouldn't I thank you? You said you were going to ask me for something in return, what is it? He said. I've changed my mind. I'm not going to ask you for anything. You're ungrateful. Vandiyathevan realized that she had reason to accuse him like that. Once again he rubbed the half-roll and confirmed that there was grass. Say Madrakumari. I am ashamed to think of the way I suspected you last night. Forgive me for that. Well, forget it, too. Think of what must happen. What will you do after I drop you off in Ceylon? How will you find the prince's whereabouts? God who helped me cross this sea will help me. You seem to have a lot of faith in God. Do you think God cares about the affairs of little people like us? I have never made a philosophical inquiry that far. I will pray to God if there is any difficulty or danger. God will help in time. God sent you to push the boat for me in this sea, didn't he? You don't need to be so arrogant. I didn't come to push the boat for you. God didn't send me in a dream to help you. Then why did you escape me yesterday? Why are you pushing the boat now? Don't ask about that. It's my own business. Vandiyathevan was deep in silent thought. A thought occurred to his proud mind. He thought that this girl had fallen in love with him after seeing his heroic beauty. He immediately changed his mind. Her speech and actions did not leave room for such thinking. There is another mysterious reason. She needs to shut her mouth and find out. Just thinking about it makes me a little anxious. He said. What is it? Are you worried too? They say Sri Lanka has a lot of forest and mountains. More than half of Sri Lanka is forested by mountain buffalo. They say wild beasts abound there. Wild elephants roam in herds. Sometimes elephant herds come outside the forest. I've heard the people in Sri Lanka are barbaric. That's a complete lie. Well then, if you say so, it will be true. We must find out where Prince Aromas Hivarmar is in such a forest. Did you just say it wasn't difficult? Yes, I said. I thought at first what difficulty there could be in finding where the sun was. Why do you think otherwise now? The sun may have been hidden by clouds, or it may have gone under the sea. No cloud, no sea can hide this sun. Even the cloud that tries to hide the golden one will receive light, the sea will shine. How does she get excited when she talks about the prince? Like many of the people of Chola, this woman also considers him a god. What would Aroma's Ivarmer have such charming power, thinking like this, so you are saying that it is not difficult to find a prince in Sri Lanka? He said. If you inquire where the Chola Sanyam is, you will see where the prince is. How so? Did you hear that half of Sri Lanka is full of Chola Sanyam? Yes, I have also heard that the Chola army has spread from Madhotam to the city of Pulastia. Then? Where is the prince in such a vast territory? It may take a long time to find him after searching the wild paths. I must have brought this leaf to him at once. Have you seen the leaf? Do you know how urgent it is? Samathira Kumari remained silent without giving any reply. Vandiyathevan said, if you know for sure where the prince is, you can go straight to his place without any hesitation. There is a way, said Punghuali. I asked you hoping there would be. Didn't I tell you I'd drop you off at Dragon Island in the morning? Yes. 
Next to Dragon Island there is one called Goblin Island. The very name of the island is terrible. Don't be afraid. In the beginning, the name of that island was Bodha Island. When Lord Buddha came to Sri Lanka as a celestial path, he first landed on that island. He lived under the royal tree there and taught the Buddha Dharma. Hence the name Bodha Island. It would later become Ghost Island. Yes. Many people were scared like you when they heard the name Goblin Island. Then no one normally goes to that island. Only people who are not afraid of goblins go. I mean, brave people like you. You're not afraid of a marauding devil, aren't you? Well, what did you come to say about the island of the troll? If you tarry a moment on the shores of Buddha Island I will inquire and tell you where Pawnee's Selver is now in Ceylon. Whom will you interrogate on Monster Island? There's a troll on Troll Island. I'll investigate. Won't you show me that troll too? That is impossible. You must not follow me into the island. If you promise to watch the boat and wait on the shore, I will go and inquire and bring you back. Well, so be it. Said Valavarayan. The wind blew gently. With the help of the mast, the boat tore through the sea. The sound of the ocean was heard. Vandiyadeva rolled his eyes and fell asleep. He slipped easily from wakefulness to sleep.